Hello, and welcome to our podcast on the literary term of juxtaposition. Let's go ahead and see what we're talking about here. So juxtaposition is the placing of two items side by side to emphasize the differences and the contrast between these two. And that contrast is what reveals the point or perspective of the author. So we have to look at it and first observe that two items are being contrasted right next to each other at the same time. And that's the idea of juxtaposing these two items. And in a second, we'll talk through how we can dissect that juxtaposition to help determine what the author's point was, and then we can then ideally learn from the author's point. And so how do I find and then interpret juxtaposition? As always, we have to agree that we're going to read or view actively rather than passively. We really have to make a commitment to become students of the text we are looking at, reading, or viewing. We need to pay attention to items, to characters, or to images that are in close proximity and that seem to contrast each other. And if we're simply passively reading, meaning just moving our eyes over a text or just zoning out while we watch a movie, we're not going to see that juxtaposition. We're not going to see the intentional placement of characters or items or motifs next to each other by the author. So we really have to, as always, agree to view this stuff actively. We're not just hanging out watching things on a Friday night. We're actually studying them. So we have to agree to do that. And on the next slide, we'll show you a chart to help us interpret that juxtaposition. Basically, we want to determine the qualities or the message of one side of the image or the words or the character pair that's being juxtaposed. And then we want to determine the qualities or message of the other side. And then we have to make that interpretive jump. We have to ask ourselves, what does each side represent? What's the author trying to teach us by putting them next to each other? If we can figure out what the juxtaposition means, what the author's going for, we can begin figuring out what we are supposed to learn from that text. Because whatever message the author is trying to send by juxtaposing A with B, we can learn that lesson as well. And so here is that chart to organize your thoughts. So in many of our practice sets, we will be looking at images first. They are still images, two things sitting right next to each other. And we simply label one side part one and the other side part two. And we examine each one by itself. So what is literally shown on the left side of a text, for example? What are its characteristics? What does it mean? What values does it seem to hold? And then we're gonna jump over to the right-hand side of an image. What does it literally show? What does it seem to be saying? And then that third row down, we have to say, well, how do these things clash? Okay, one is big, one is small. One is put together, one is destroyed. One is green and clearly full of crops. The other is desolate and devoid of crops. Like we have to examine on the literal level first. And then we have to make that mental interpretive jump and say, what point do we think the author is trying to make through this. We can't just jump to what, well, I think it's about space. I think it's about aliens. Like we have to try and get to what the author is trying to say by putting these two clashing images next to each other. What are we supposed to learn from it? And then connect the dots to ourselves. And as we move from static images to movie images to the written word, we're going to continue to use this mental construct of of examining both sides of the juxtaposition and then taking logical steps to walk ourselves through till ultimately we make that interpretation. And so like we said, we will start with juxtaposition in pictures, but then we will move toward juxtaposition in texts. And so here's some common ways where authors use juxtaposition to advance their message. Number one, they will juxtapose a character with that character's setting. So for example, Footloose. They're gonna place a liberal thinking kid from Chicago, an urban area from the North, very liberal in his thinking, and they're going to juxtapose him in a conservative thinking setting. They're going to put him in a setting that doesn't necessarily agree with him. And so they're going to juxtapose the kid who thinks this way with a town that thinks the complete opposite. And we're gonna see how that goes. Another way this comes up is with a protagonist being juxtaposed with the antagonist. We need to have a hero on the hero's journey, and the hero needs to be faced with challenges. Well, you can juxtapose our hero with the challenges that they are facing. 
And the third way we typically see juxtaposition is in the idea of a foil pair. Now, a foil pair could be, like we said above, a protagonist with an antagonist. But oftentimes, foil pairs are characters who start out at odds. They dislike each other. They don't see the world in the same way. And then they evolve to like each other, to become more friendly, to learn from each other. And so we can juxtapose within a foil pair that never learns from each other, as in Harry Potter and Voldemort. Or we can juxtapose in a foil pair, for example, Harry Potter and Hermione. They are a foil pair. Harry Potter does not study very hard. He just kind of figures things out as he goes. Hermione is the contrasting foil to him where she is logical, by the book, does all the studying. And so we can see, does that foil pair stay at odds? meaning they never get along at all throughout the text? Or do they come together, learn from each other, better each other, etc.? And so for our visual learners out there, again, to go back to that hero's journey chart that we've been using throughout the course, you can see some areas where juxtaposition oftentimes comes out. In the bottom left, we have a character juxtaposed with their setting taking a character who doesn't really fit in, kind of a fish out of water scenario, and juxtaposing them with a setting that seems very foreign to them. As we advance through the hero's journey, we have step six, like the hero has to face tests, ordeals, allies, and enemies. What a great place to juxtapose our hero, our protagonist, with an antagonist. And then over on the right-hand side, juxtaposition with a foil character who may stay at odds with our hero or who may come together and learn from each other. And so you can see two examples of photos here. We have the one on the left where we have a long line of cars and then a person crossing the street. And then we have a completely different photo over on the right where we have rows of guns and flowers. So let's look at the one on the left. The two elements that we would want to look at for our juxtaposition are kind of top and bottom. The top of the picture full of cars, full of energy, just being held back by a simple stoplight. You can imagine once that light turns green, tires are going to be screeching, engines are going to be revving. That's busy. It's full of energy. It's panicky almost, like we've got to get somewhere in rush hour traffic. And that part of the picture is juxtaposed with the simple, individual, solitary figure at the bottom who's relatively casually walking across the street. That person may or may not have the same passion and energy that's about to be unleashed by the cars, but that person is ready to move across the street. So just as a literal level of juxtaposition, you can see the top being juxtaposed with the bottom. And then we could make that interpretive jump and go, okay, what's the author trying to say about cars? Probably not. About individuals? Maybe. But the idea of an urban area is probably some, they're trying to make some point about an urban area and the balance of maybe technology versus the individual. You can see juxtaposition with political cartoons. This has a left and a right to both of these. You can see at the top, it says, we've lost control of our borders. They must be rounded up and deported. Two shadowy characters just talking about immigration and taking people out. And that is juxtaposed with the image on the right, where it's two Native Americans who are saying all 300 million of them. So on the left, it seems like they're talking about immigration in the modern era, people coming from all over the world, and the typical policy of finding them, rounding them up, and taking them out. But then they're juxtaposing them with Native Americans who have been here since and before our nation's inception. And so we're getting this idea of the modern versus the traditional being placed side by side, juxtaposing views of immigration. And then in the bottom right, we see a political cartoon of President Obama. The author of this cartoon is juxtaposing the fact that Obama did win the 2009 Nobel Prize, which is an important humanitarian award for doing good in the world. But that is juxtaposed with the fact that he did also win the 2013 PolitiFact Lie of the Year. So this political cartoon artist is using juxtaposition to show the goods and the bads of this president. And some examples of juxtaposition in speeches and in texts, we start to get to the written word. And so we have an example from Martin Luther King Jr. It says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, juxtaposing the words of injustice and justice. Gandhi said, an eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. 
And so you're juxtaposing the idea of an eye for an eye, which would be a punishment idea, and the whole world blind, which would be vision. Could be a literal vision, but it could also be metaphorical vision. Like, is this the best way to punish people in society? John F. Kennedy said, if a society cannot help the many who are poor, it cannot save the few who are rich. So juxtaposing the class structure there. And then one more example here, again from the things they carried, it says, as a first lieutenant and a platoon leader, Jimmy Cross carried a compass, maps, code books, binoculars, and a 45 caliber pistol that weighed 2.9 pounds fully loaded. He carried a strobe light and the responsibility for the lives of his men. And so you get the juxtaposition of all the tangible things he's carrying, compass, maps, weapon, strobe light. Those are tangible. They have a definite weight. And it's being juxtaposed with this idea that he carries a responsibility for the lives of his men. That doesn't physically weigh anything, but it is very weighty on his mind. And so you're juxtaposing the tangible with the intangible. So that's about it for now on juxtaposition, the idea of putting contrasting ideas, thoughts, elements, images next to each other in order to make a point. Authors do it a lot in visual images, in film images, in songs, texts, poetry, longer novels, etc. And our hope is as we read more actively, we can start to see that juxtaposition and then think deeply about why the author might be doing that and what point they are trying to make. As always, if you have any questions, please bring those into class. Otherwise, thank you and we will see you soon.